Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you are doing great. It is starting to cool off where I live in the evenings, and when I took the trash out a while ago, it was so pleasant. And I haven't been able to say that for a long time, but it is really nice today. But we've got this big honking cloud over here, too. It's like huge. I don't know what it's going to do, but... Anyway, it is nice outside this afternoon, this evening. I hope you are having an awesome Tuesday. That has been a weird Tuesday for me, but that's okay. It's all good. I got a lot of things done that I wasn't planning on doing, so kind of a good day. All right, well, I want to read Psalm 18 tonight, and I also want to talk to you about the Let Us Worship movement. I want to talk to you briefly about it, um, maybe yesterday, I think. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you more in depth about it because I shared like one clip that had a lot of different things in it, a lot of different things that they did this uh, last weekend. So anyway, I want to share that with you too. I want to share that I am on day two of my day 21 of prayer for our nation. I hope that you are willing to join me in that. You can join today. It's okay. You can join tomorrow. It's okay. I mean, there's no set time that you have to pray just sometime during the day. Pray for our country. Pray for our nation. Pray for um, all truth. No lies. And it's big gray hair right here in the middle. They are so awesome to just stick out. All right. Well, it is what it is. Okay. Well, let's pray. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for um, these new believers from this weekend that accepted Jesus. Let's pray for those two things. And then we're going to get into Psalm 18. And Psalm 18 is kind of long. So I think that's all I'm going to read tonight is Psalm 18. I'm not going to read additional things in the New Testament. I'm just going to read Psalm 19. Got me some paper today. I'm so excited. It's just it's just the little things in life that make you happy. I've been out of paper for a while. So I went and got me some at DG. As a matter of fact, I got two. I got two. So now I have 400 sheets of paper. And um, I won't have to use Christmas paper like I am today. You can just barely see the writing because I'm using a pencil. I like using pencils when I don't have to write things. I don't have to sign things. I like using a pencil. God, we just come to you and we just want to thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. That we can depend on you. We can trust you, God. You are our everlasting Father. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. You let us hide underneath your wings, God. And uh, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You are loving and caring and kind and compassionate. And you are trustworthy, you are faithful, you are patient, you want none to perish. God, thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes, their ears, and their hearts, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals. We pray for them to return to you and to repent and to have their relationship with you reconciled once again. 
God, we pray for our nation. We pray that this nation would be united under you, God. We pray for a Jesus movement in our nation that no one can stop, that no one can believe. I just thought of today, God, I'm going to pray that people that normally tell lies will just start spewing truth, that you would just send the Holy Spirit to them and they would just speak truth instead of lies, God that so many people would be mesmerized by the truth that comes out of their mouths. God, I know that it's possible. You made a donkey speak to Balaam. We know that it's possible, God. We know that you can replace their lies with truth, God, and that truth will rise up in this country that people will see things that they have never seen before, God, that you would open all eyes and all ears and all hearts to truth, God, to your truth that's in your word. God, that you would, you would just shower everyone in this nation with the love of Jesus, God, that they would see the love of Jesus, they would see the light of Jesus, God, and they would be drawn to Jesus, to salvation. God, we know that all things are possible with you, so we are not asking the impossible of you. We know that all things are possible. We trust you. You have proven yourself over and over to be faithful to me and to anyone that's listening here, God. We praise you and we thank you. And we just pray, God, for all the disasters that are going on right now in our country and all over the world, God, that these people's needs will be met. That they will see the hands and feet of Jesus and they will see the love and compassion of Jesus. And they will know, God, that you are real. And we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. God, we just praise you and we thank you, God. And we also want to lift up the people in Afghanistan, God. We just pray that you would make a way for them, that you would make, you would remove the obstacles that our government are putting in front of these people that are trying to help people get out. It is not true that they are helping these nonprofits. That is not truth. It is not true that they are helping our retired veterans. That's not true. God, you know the truth. And God, please make a way. Please protect these people in the desert. And for the ones that want to stay and witness, God, please bless them. Please provide for them and please protect them. And please let their words penetrate the hard hearts that are in that country, that they could know Jesus as their Savior. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that's a pretty tall order of prayer. But you know what? God is capable. There is nothing that is impossible for God. There is nothing that is too hard for God. And if that could be part of his plan, then he is capable. He is capable. It just hit me today. Why not pray that the people that are lying will spew the truth instead? And the Holy Spirit will light on them and they will just start saying true things instead of lies. That would be awesome. Okay, so Psalm 18 says, God the Sovereign Savior, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my for fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. 
So this is what God is. God is our strength. God is our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. And um, he is our salvation. And we need to call upon the name of the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. The pangs of death surrounded me. And the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked. Don't hurt your leg. Okay. Also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. So in verse 4, he's talking about that death had surrounded him. And then he's talking about... I guess he was really distressed, probably from his sin. David was not a saint. David committed many sins and repented of many sins. But he cried out to the Lord, and he cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, and the foundation of the hills also quaked and were shaken. So it sounds like an earthquake because he was angry. You know, I do believe that God does get angry about our unrepentant sin and the blasphemy that is said about his son. I believe he does get angry. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebu rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, so this is how powerful God is. And this could be a look into when God exacts his wrath on the world for unrighteousness. And there will come a day when he does that. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me. For they were too strong for me. They comforted, they confronted me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So again, he's called out to God, and God delivered him from his strong enemy. And um, the Lord was his support. 
and he delivered him because he delighted in him. And the Lord rewarded him because he has clean hands and because he keeps the ways of the Lord. And um, he keeps himself from iniquity. So with the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For you, for by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? And it is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. I have wounded, it. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet, for you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the, rock, the necks of my enemies, so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up, those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed. To David and his descendants forevermore. Okay, well, let's read the study part of this. David offered the hymn of gratitude for his deliverance from the hand of Saul and all his other enemies. David began by declaring his love for the Lord and exalted exalting the Lord as his strength, rock, fortress, deliverer, shield, horn of my salvation, and stronghold. God is worthy of devotion and praise because of who he is. He is love, indicates intimate relationship and is closely associated with a mother's care for her children. The eloquent expression describes the quality in which God expresses his fatherhood and empathizes with our human frailties. It is the ultimate expression of God's presence in his closeness, closeness to his children. Love. To have compassion on always plural, is the moving force of restoration and salvation and expresses the restraint of God's anger by his love. God's mercy is based on his gracious character. 
And then it says God's way means integrity, soundness, and wholeness, utter reliability and trustworthiness. God functions as a shield of protection for those who take refuge in him. So that, that was a lot tonight. That was a long song. But it was packed with so many good things about depending on God. Who is God to you? Think about that for a minute. Who is God to you? Is God your... Let me go find the list. Is God your... Where's the list? Is God your strength, your rock, your fortress, your deliverer, your shield, your horn of salvation, your, str your stronghold? Is that who God is in your life? Because it needs to be. It needs to be. All right, I'm going to put my Bible down. And I'm going to read to you. Oh, my back kind of hurts today. I'm going to move my computer a little There we go. I'm going to read to you what I wrote today and put on three about um, let us worship and it was it was a clip but I watched the whole thing I watched it Saturday I watched it Sunday in two parts but I watched it I watched it live on Sunday night I watched the first one in two parts Saturday night and Sunday morning so this was so awesome to watch. Three beautiful words. Let us worship. When have we ever had to fight to worship Jesus? And this movement has fought court systems and fought with prayer. I love that these brothers and sisters, in addition to having awesome praise and worship and awesome speakers, went to every main government building to pray and prophesy over them. Even the White House, they prayed for the Bidens. They prayed, I don't know whether they were in the White House or not, but they prayed for the White House. They prayed for the whole Biden family, for the Harris family. They prayed for them. My favorite part of this video in moving to are all the people that got saved. There were so many people that got saved on Sunday night. They did an altar call, and many people got saved. All the people that had their chains of addiction broken through salvation in Jesus. It moved me to tears of joy for them. They are finally free. Their faces, their faces of brokenness just broke my heart this morning. It made me happy for them. But I did. I cried when I watched this short video today and watched all those people that got saved because when I watched it on Sunday night, they didn't show their faces. They just showed the back of them that they were at the altar. But on this video, it showed their faces. And it showed them crying out to God. Like David, crying out to God. Today is day two of 21 days of prayer for our country. I want to lift up these new brothers and sisters in Jesus today. That's who I want to pray for when we close. I'm going to pray for them. I already prayed for them this morning, but I want to pray for them again. I completed my first five miles last night and abstained from white sugar and the pudding in my pantry. I even went and bought some more pudding today, and I'm still abstaining from pudding. Um... Join me in praying for this country to unite under God once again and for these new people that were invited into the kingdom on Sunday night. Let's make America, instead of making it great again, let's make it God's again. Let's make this nation, one nation under God. Let's win America back for Jesus. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to draw the lost to Jesus, eyes, ears, and hearts open to the truth. Let freedom ring again.
Our freedom is tied to salvation. Our freedom is tied to following God's word, following God's statutes, walking in God's ways, the way that David was talking tonight. Um, that's all, it's all tied in there. But God gives us free will to choose. And so we must choose. I think I'll do this salvation tonight. God gives us free will. He doesn't make us doesn't make us come to him. Okay, I'm gonna do the E band tonight. I haven't done the E band in a while. The child has a blanket over his head. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1:16. Okay, let's get this band up here. Gold. The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So you have the next one over here. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of, this, of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty of our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? So then we have the red. I have the red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. You don't. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Romans 10, 9. This question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And if you have not, and you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, we all have to choose one side or the other. There are only two choices. Then repeat this prayer after me. I guess I can't, I can't rest my arm. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord.
Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, well, we have the next color. It's green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Okay, you have the heart. You have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. And then we have the Bible. We have the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And we have the little praying man. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. And then we have the drop of water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then you have the little fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. It definitely is. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So that is the eban, www.eban.com. Uh, E3 resources. So if you did invite Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Again, do read your Bible. Get you a Bible and read it every day. And start in Matthew. Do not start in Genesis and read through the Old Testament. Start in Matthew so you can learn about Jesus. And then um, pray. Pray every day. Join me in this 21 days of prayer. Tomorrow is day three. And um, just be thankful and share with everyone share with everyone and if you will put your name in the comments then I will pray for you just like I'm praying for these brothers and sisters that are new to the kingdom everybody needs strength it's not always easy just because you ask Jesus into your heart does not mean that your life will be perfect because even he said that we are going to have problems we're going to have problems but we don't have to face them alone we face them with him. Now, where am I going? I need to go to Numbers 6, 24 through 26. I'm going to give you a blessing from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, a lot of peace. In this country, we need a lot of peace in this world. All right. Well, it is time for me to get off of here. I have to wake my child up that has fallen asleep in my chair over here. And I can do my five miles. I'm doing my five miles after I do this. And while well, I'm waiting for my video to upload to YouTube, I haven't figured out how to do, I have to do some stuff to be able to do YouTube Live. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Mm. I need to sneeze. <laughs> I think I'm going to be okay, though. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray for these new brothers and sisters that got saved in Washington, D.C., and uh, 
Let's pray. Let's pray for people to get saved. Just a minute. I'll be with you in just a minute. God, we just come to you and we praise you, God. We thank you, God. We just do lift up these brothers and sisters, God, that gave their lives to Jesus on Sunday night, that went to that altar, that invited Jesus into their hearts. God, please give them strength. Please give them guidance and wisdom. I just pray that there will be counselors that will come alongside them. I pray that they would get plugged into a church somewhere, God, so they can learn more and more about you. Just pray that you would lead them to a church that teaches and preaches Jesus and your word, God. Just pray, God, that you would, uh, that they would feel your presence, and that the Holy Spirit will remove all the things that they have given up, God, that the Holy Spirit will remove the desires that they once had. God, we just pray, we pray for the lost, God. We just cry out to you for the lost. We just pray, God, that eyes and ears and hearts would be open to truth, God, and that people would be drawn by the Holy Spirit to Jesus so that they can be saved, so they can experience that amazing grace, so they can give up the things that displease you the most and that their hearts can start being healed and they can start moving forward in a different direction, God, with Jesus. And we just praise you and thank you. I praise you for everyone that comes and listens to your word through this channel. God, this is your ministry and not mine. I am just the willing vessel that delivers the message. God, because you called me to do that in 2018, really before then, probably 2016, you called me to deliver your messages, God. God, help me to be obedient. Help anyone here that needs help, God, to reach out to someone that can help them. And I just I pray for all the sick, God. I'm praying for some people on Facebook, some people that I don't even know that are sick, God. I just pray that you would heal their bodies and be with their families. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm going to have to get off of here. I have someone that's objecting. So have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I won't be here tomorrow night. I'll be at youth. Um, so much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.